My name is Lieutenant Colonel Lee Roger Wolfram, and I am a story. Welcome to the bunker. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Colonel channel, and we're going to continue uh, following the P. Diddy Combs case. What I wanted to cover today is I wanted to cover the new lawsuits against him, uh, the new allegations. And uh, so I've cut up a couple of videos here. We'll go through them right now. And I'm going to start with, remember, I'm a defense attorney and everyone is presumed to be innocent until proven guilty. And I think that's a very important thing to keep in mind. So we're going to start with his own attorney's view of this. Mr. Combs and his legal team have full confidence in the facts, their legal defenses, and the integrity of the judicial process. In court, the truth will prevail that Mr. Combs has never sexually assaulted anyone, adult or minor, man or woman. You know, Mr. Combs certainly has a right to remain silent. You know, he's entered a not guilty plea to the charges, and that is certainly well within his right. His resolve is the same. Um, he believes he's innocent. Uh, I believe he's innocent and we're gonna fight this case with all of our might until we don't have to fight any longer. Look, our investigation is ongoing. Um, we are committed to bringing justice to everyone who's been victimized by the defendant. Now, this is an important point because the investigation is ongoing on the criminal case, and what we're talking about today is the new civil charges that have been filed against him. However, guess what? The U.S. attorney is gonna be all over these as potential witnesses, and that will lead to potentially additional information or additional evidence in the criminal prosecution. Because, remember, it's ongoing. Well, Diddy is not giving up, um, even before he gets to the trial, he's not giving up on trying to get out of jail. You know that he has been uh, turned down twice. The biggest secret in the entertainment industry that really wasn't a secret at all has finally been revealed to the world. The wall of silence has now been broken and victims are coming forward. Our team has had at this point more than 3,285 individuals contact us. Over 3,000. Okay, well, you see the meter down there. If you're not familiar with the meter, check out my last uh, P. Diddy uh, video and I explain the meter. It was designed by a former client here at the Wolfgram Law Firm. And what it indicates is as the dial goes up, so does the consequence. And you'll see how that plays out as this video plays out. With people claiming, people claiming to have been victimized by Sean Combs. After vetting, we now represent 120 individuals who intend to bring civil claims in civil court against Sean Diddy Combs, as well as claims against many other individuals and entities that we will name as defendants as we file these individual cases. Okay, so here's something that I wanna point out. From the federal prosecution, my experience on these are that the feds, they've already executed the search warrants, they've already got a, a ton of evidence because he recorded the stuff that's a completely separate separate topic. But here's where this, what I have seen in the federal cases, what's going to occur, I believe, is his associates and those other people that are named in the civil suit are likely to be the same ones named in the criminal suit. And in a federal case, they will all start to roll to save their own ass. Sean Diddy Combs is hit with a wave of new lawsuits when half a dozen new people come forward accusing Combs of rape, sexual assault, and sexual abuse. The civil lawsuits were filed on Monday just days after the detained Combs appeared in court for his sex trafficking case. And to protect the identity of the accusers, the lawsuits were filed anonymously by two women identified as Jane Doe and four men identified as John Doe, including a minor. Now, this is really where it's going to change the whole character, because at this point, any defense to this with the white parties or the videos that they got, all this is most likely going to be based upon consenting adults. And the consenting adults can have freak offs if they want to. It's only when the coercion, the threats, the violence, when that comes into play, that's when it's illegal. But for the purposes of a straight up just consenting adults thing, that's going to be the defense. 
There's no defense when it's a minor. Minors can't consent. It completely changes the criminal prosecution entirely because it, remo it removes that entire defense of consent. The new suits were the first batch of 120 alleged victims with claims against the embattled music mogul, which attorney Tony Busby announced earlier this month. In 95, a woman says she attended a party for Notorious B.I.G.'s music video, One More Chance. It was there she claims Combs raped her in a bathroom. The woman said Combs brought her into the bathroom to talk privately and then began kissing her unexpectedly. She says she tried to pull away and he allegedly slammed her head into the wall, which caused her to fall to the floor. When she was on the floor, the producer allegedly hit her again, lifted her dress, and raped her. After, Combs allegedly threatened her by saying, you better not tell anyone about this or you'll disappear. A John Doe says he was just 16 years old when the mogul fondled him at one of his white parties in 1998. The male plaintiff alleges Combs told him he had the look of a star and then ordered him to drop his pants. He claims Combs explained to him that it was a rite of passage to becoming a music star and allegedly asked him, don't you want to break into the business? The then teen says he complied out of fear, anxiety and the power imbalance he felt with Combs and later realized what he says happened was sexual assault. In 2004, another Jane Doe alleges Combs raped her in a hotel room after he invited her and a friend there for a party. Combs allegedly gave them drinks and told them to snort cocaine. The woman who was a freshman in college says Combs forced her friend to perform oral sex on him and threatened to kill them if they didn't comply. In 2006, another John Doe, who was a security guard at the now infamous White Parties, claims he was sexually assaulted by Combs. The man says he began to feel extremely ill at the party after drinking two drinks with alcohol that were provided by Combs. The accuser says he was disoriented and alleges the Bad Boy Records founder forcibly pushed him into an open van, held him down, and sexually assaulted him. In 2008, another man claims he was sexually assaulted by Combs in a New York Macy's. This John Doe says he was an advisor at Echo Clothing, a competitor of the mogul Sean John clothing line. He claims he was in a stockroom at Macy's in Manhattan when Combs and three bodyguards entered. Doe alleges he was turning a corner in the stockroom when he was hit around the base of the neck, possibly with a pistol. He says this forced him to his hands and knees, and he saw that each of Diddy's bodyguards had guns in their waistbands. The man alleges he heard multiple voices saying things like, I'll kill you. Combs allegedly approached the man and forcefully, brutally, and orally raped him for at least two minutes. According to the suit, after Combs was finished, he threw Doe's head aside and said words to the effect of, shut up or I'll kill you. And in 2021, another man claims he was drugged and assaulted by Combs and multiple other unnamed men at a party. This John Doe says he became disoriented after a drink at a New York party. He claims he was trying to leave when he heard another man say, hold on, and promise to help him. Doe says he remembers being in a bedroom, unable to speak, move, or fight back. He says multiple men began sexually assaulting him through sodomy and other forced acts. The man says he distinctly remembers seeing Combs above him naked at one point during the assault. The male plaintiff says that he was sodomized by at least three men. Combs was already facing a number of civil lawsuits accusing him of sexual misconduct and other illegal activity, which he has denied all those allegations. The disgraced mogul who remains locked up in a federal detention center in Brooklyn has denied the recent allegations against him. About those charges, they're all connected to his notorious freak-offs. These weren't your typical after parties. We're talking hours, even days-long performances, where Diddy allegedly coerced people into compromising acts while recording the entire ordeal that the individuals who work with him have been well-trusted individuals, you know, in his mind, of course, you know, they've worked with him, they've worked for him, you know, whether they're security guards or, you know, assistants and things of that nature. Um, so my guess is that they've had a relationship that's been, you know, nourished with trust. And so here's where that trust goes down the toilet. And that is when those people get charged with a crime. And in some cases, it's the first one to the prosecutor and cooperates with the authority that gets actual benefit by the sentencing guidelines for being cooperating with the government. And believe me, when you're talking about life sentences and the kind of sentences that are potentially out here, these people will start to roll. You watch, mark my words, we'll come back later, we'll see.
It's not just his own neck on the line either, because let's face it, we all know he didn't operate alone. Now, with his volatile temper and a legal case that's blowing up, there are a whole lot of people out there shaking in their boots. Diddy didn't do it alone. Where are all the celebrities and friends that hung around Diddy? Did they really not know all of this information? Those who were once in his inner circle, yeah, they're probably losing sleep right now, knowing that if Diddy goes down, he could very well drag them down with him. I just wanted to give you an update here today because the stuff is fast and furious as these new lawsuits come in. Potentially thousands, we know at least hundreds. I will try to keep you up to date. If you're interested in this stuff, be sure to subscribe and be sure to like. Then I'll keep you informed on the important updates. I'll give you my two cents worth. Until the next time, this is Wolf Six at the Wolf Graham Worldwide Headquarters out here.